Hey everybody, welcome back to Web Inspect. I am Timothy Miller, your host, and today we are talking about a topic that I am actually pretty excited about. This will be a continuation of my Keybase series um, from a little ways back. I'm actually really excited about this video. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time, really ever since I did the Keybase series, because I wanted this to exist. I wanted this in my own life, but I couldn't figure out how to do it in a way that kept things you know, safe and private enough while still being relatively easy. I wasn't able to figure it out at the time, but I've figured it out now. So today I'm going to show you guys how to get your password store onto iOS in a safe and secure way. So as you can kind of see here, I have my password store on my phone. Um, not only that, it syncs both ways from my phone to my computer and back. I can add passwords on my phone and it syncs to my computer automatically. I can add more passwords on my computer and it syncs to my phone automatically. And this is all done just on my local area network. It's not it's not going to any server anywhere. It all stays on my phone and my computer. So it's super safe and secure in addition to the encryption done by pass and the encryption done by Keybase. So if you go back in this series, I'll have this linked in the info card above. We've already set up a password store. We've already set up our GPG keys. We've stored our password store in Keybase. Our Keybase repository, we cannot actually use that in pass on iOS. And that's kind of been the roadblock for me up to this point. I wasn't sure how to access the Keybase repository from pass, and I still haven't been able to find a way to do that. But what I have found is a way to make it so my phone can access my password repository on my actual computer. And to do that, we use a technology called SSH. So before I just jump in and show you guys how to do this, let's first walk through kind of the steps that it's going to require to get this done. First of all, you need your password store set up. We have talked about that in previous videos. Um, it, that is linked in the info card above. You can always go back to those videos, watch through them and get your password store set up. That is not something we're going to cover in this video. Secondly, we need the ability to SSH into our own computer. Uh, this is actually surprisingly easy on Mac and Linux. It's a little more difficult on Windows, but it looks like Windows 10 does have this built in by default. I found an article about this. Um, I will link that in the description below, but I will not be walking you through setting that up on Windows either. I will show you how to do it on Mac just because it's super easy and quick and I'm using a Mac. Once we have the ability to SSH into our computer, then we need to set up a bare Git repository. And I'll talk about that a little bit more, but basically a bare Git repository is so that you can push and pull to that repository without causing any problems for yourself. This bare repository will live on our local computer, but it will act as a server that we connect to with both our computer and with the phone. Once we have our bare repository set up as a server that we can SSH into, then we just have to get our phone set up. We need to copy our GPG keys over to the phone so it can decrypt those passwords, and then we need to give it access to that repository. Once all of that is done, then we should be able to sync our password repository to our phone and to our computer, and it should all stay and sync magically and yeah, that's the plan. So let's jump into it. So like we talked about, the first thing you need to do is set up your password repository. I already have that set up. I have pass installed and my repository all set up. Um, so I'm good to go in that regard. The next thing you need to do is make sure SSH is installed and enabled on your computer. Um, on Macs, come with SSH pre-installed. If you type SSH in the terminal, you'll see this returned, which shows you that SSH is installed, but you also have to enable it. You have to enable SSH access for your computer. I have been a Mac user for years and I never realized how easy it is to actually enable SSH like this. You just go into the sharing in your system preferences and you turn on this remote login option and that turns on the ability to SSH into your computer. Now I have it only enabled for my root user, so you have to have my username and password enabled to SSH into my computer. You don't want people to just SSH into it without a password. So it's a good idea just to restrict this to your root user. So once SSH is enabled, we can come back into the command line. I will full screen this. And in the command line, we can actually use SSH and type the name of our computer to kind of test this out. And it should give you this, where it says permanently adding a host key because you've never SSH'd into this computer before, and then it should ask you for a password. After you enter this password, it should just give you a last login. So it just returns because you are already on this computer, so you don't need to SSH into it. You already have access to it. So that's what it should give you. That's kind of a good test that shows you that SSH is working on your machine. So the next thing we need to do is set up a bare repository for our for our phone to be able to push and pull from. So I'm going to create that just in my root directory. I'm going to use a make 
directory command. I'm just going to do something like this where it's dot password store dot get. This means it's still a hidden folder. It'll just be hidden in my root directory. And I'll do that. And then we need to change into that directory. All right, so I changed directory into this password store.get folder. Now we need to initialize this as a git repository. So I'm going to run git init dash dash bear, and this will set up our bear repository. Now what we want to do is essentially set this folder up as a server that our password store can push to. So we're going to change to the password store folder. This is our password store folder. This is the default location for password store to be stored in. You can change this, um, but if you haven't modified this, then this is probably where it will be. So in order to add that bear repository as a server, we use uh, git remote add, and then we just type the path to that folder. So I ran this command and I realized I forgot that you actually have to name your remote. Um, so I'm instead going to do I'm going to name this hub just because it's kind of a hub that I'm pushing to. Um, and then I just add the path. And if we run that, now it didn't say anything, but that probably means it was successful. So now we can just try to push to it. And it looks like that succeeded. So we have our server essentially all set up here at passwordstore.get. There is one more thing we need to do in here. So I change directory into passwordstore.get. We need to set up a hook that will essentially, whenever this receives new data, it will push it to our original password store. This just kind of keeps things in sync. So and in order to do that, we're going to check or we're going to change directory into the hooks folder. And we want to create a post update hook. So that just means anytime this repository receives an update, uh, we will want to run this script. So I'm going to make a file by running touch post update. So one other thing we need to do after we create this file, we need to change the permissions just to make sure it can execute. So we'll do change mod plus x, which means allow it to execute, and we'll run that on the post update file. Now we need to actually add the contents for that file. I'm going to use sublime text to do this. You can use whatever text editor you want. Here's my sublime text with post update. Um, I'll also put this file in a link below just so you don't have to type it all out if you want to. Um, it's basically just, it's a pretty simple bash script and it's going to look like this. So here is the contents of this post update file. This will also be linked in the description below if you want to just copy paste it. Um, but let me tell you kind of what it does, just so you know. So it first echoes a message telling you what it's doing, then it changes directory into your password store, and it actually pulls from the hub. Now we do it this way because the password store is a working directory and you don't want to push to working directories. So instead of pushing to password store, what we're doing is we're going to change to the password store and then pull from the hub. So it just automatically pulls in new changes anytime this repository gets any new changes. All right, so with that file done, now anytime this password store.get folder receives changes, it will automatically update your password store on your computer. So you won't have to manually pull from password store I get every time you update this from your phone. Okay, so that is all the setup we really need to do on the computer. Um, now we need to set up our phone and that does involve um, a little bit more command line work. First, we need to actually export our GPG keys from this computer so that we can transfer those over to the phone um, so that the phone can actually decrypt our passwords. So in order to do that, we're gonna run a couple more commands, which are GPG commands. So first you need to find the ID of the key that you wanna export. In order to do that, I'm going to run GPG list secret keys. Now this will give you a long list of numbers and letters, which is your ID. You'll wanna copy that. After you've copied that, then you want to export that key so that you can add it onto your phone. So I'm gonna run this command. And I'm just going to export this to desktop into a file called GPG key. And that looks like that worked. Uh, there it is right there. There's my GPG key. This is my private GPG key. So now I want to do the same thing with my public key. And that's what that command is going to look like. You just don't do secret keys. You do just regular export. And now we should have both our private key and our public key on our desktop. Now I'm going to jump into iTunes. You don't have to do it this way. You can transfer these keys with SSH, um, but I find this way easier. You can just go to the file sharing on your phone, select pass, 
and then drag and drop both of these keys in here. Once you've drag and dropped those keys in there, you can go to PGP and do iTunes sharing there, and um, it will automatically import those PGP keys for you. Once that is done, all that remains is to set up your password repository. So if we go into password repository here, then we just set up this SSH URL. As you can see, I've already got it. It's going to look something like this, ssh dot slash slash, the username for your computer, and then the name of your computer, and then you use the absolute path to that password store. So users slash my username dot password sync dot get. It will automatically select the master branch for you. You want to enter your username and tell it to use your password as an authentication method and then click clone. And if everything has gone correctly, then you should have your password store stored on your phone. And you can sync that with your computer at any time just by pulling down. It will sync with your computer automatically. And that's that. And that's it. You now have all your passwords on your phone and your computer. Um, super safe and secure, can be synced both ways. It's just, in my opinion, it's a really good solution and um, a really great way to kind of own your own data when it comes to passwords and keep everything safe and secure and organized on your computer and your phone. So I hope you learned something today. Thanks so much for joining me and we will be back to a regularly scheduled program next week. Thanks for watching and never stop learning. Bye.